Hello and welcome to Wine the Flick, which tonight is sparkling wine, the flick. Um, my friend here, who saw Rampage with me tonight, is a, a multi hyphenate. I don't even know where to begin describing him. He defies categorization. You cannot put him in a box. He was a fashion model, a, he is a fashion stylist, he is a reality TV star. If you are a fan of Big Brother 3 and or Big Brother All Stars, Marcellus. <laughs> Marcellus. Did it all. Did you are all. a TV personality. A TV you have personality and you're on TV. I am. And and he's my former neighbor. Yes. He's also that. He lives and, next to Yes, and a good friend of mine and my husband. So um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. The masochistic Marcellus said to me, I will go with you to anything. I said, Will you go with me to Rampage? He said yes. Ergo, we saw Rampage together. We saw Rampage together. Uh, yes, also Matt's behind the camera. Hello, Matt, with a white Russian. Hello. Hello, good to see you at the Arclight. So, um, <laughs> did you have high expectations for the greatness of this giant animal extravaganza? I did not think that it was going to be amazing, but I did have hopes because Jumanji was so good. It was so good, surprisingly so. So I thought yeah. that this could be like... You know, The Rock has turned a corner and now all his <laughs> movies that are usually so bad are gonna be good. Okay. That's what I had hoped. Did that happen? That did not happen. Oh no! <laughs> we had fun. You clapped at one point. I, I clapped at clap. one point and so did you. <laughs> I did clap. So don't let him get all cynical on you here because no, you had fun. I did I have fun. I recall watching you have fun. I did have fun. <laughs> and you know what? There's something to be said about a movie that is actually not good. You know, and there's something to be said about a movie that is like so bad it becomes good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I think that this could kind of fall into that. Because there's reasons to see this movie. If you like The Rock, which I do, and you find him attractive, which he is, then you go see whatever The Rock happens to do. Do you like what The Rock is cooking? I mm -hmm. happen to generally like what The Rock is cooking. <laughs> That's a throwback from his wrestling I days. understood that. Thank you. I got that reference. Thank you. Yes. You know what, though? No, he has stopped doing that one eyebrow thing. There was, oh, a, there was always yeah. like a... The one eyebrow. Mm -hmm. like, it's called the he, people's eyebrow. The people's eyebrow, and now he's an actor. He's, not, he's more than an eyebrow. He's everything from there on down. Mm. <laughs> is he getting bigger? This movie is about animals that get bigger. Is he getting bigger? Did they like CGI him out to make him even more giant than he already is? I kind of felt like he just looked so big and uncomfortable in this, and then I remember <laughs> not thinking that that's how he normally is, so maybe he did get bigger. Yeah. Or maybe he's like, um, you know how they're accusing Levi Zachary or whatever, the guy that's doing Shazam of wearing like a big suit to fill out the role. Uh, maybe The Rock is now wearing a rock suit that I makes see. him actually bigger. <laughs> the t-shirt with the abs, yes. if we all get older. Which I want. <laughs> like, I want that t-shirt. You don't need it. You I do are need a it. I am not a specimen. No. I'm not running around like The Rock right. in a t-shirt. Oh my God. So Please. we should probably say what Rampage is about, because there's a point to it. <laughs> Um, so these evil genetic scientists um, are messing with DNA. Whatever anybody messes with DNA, it never turns it's out well. Never good. It's never ends like a movie well. like this is what you get. Anyway, so um, this space mission goes awry as they are wont to do, and the samples go plummeting down to Earth, only on America. Yes, only in America. <laughs> only in the heartland. <laughs> only in the heartland. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you get a, a perfectly fine gorilla becomes gigantic. A perfectly fine wolf becomes a giant flying wolf. And then... That also is a porcupine. No, that's a, that's a crocodile. No. The crocodile the, the, is also the porcupine. No, the wolf had quills like a porcupine because oh. he throws them at one point. Oh, I thought that those were like things that had been shot at the wolf that he was in like... Oh, he was throwing off. <laughs> I think the wolf was like some weird hybrid that had like oh. six different animals. Okay. You know. That's not impossible. I, don't, I want rules. I mean, and there are no rules. There are no rules. <laughs> and then the, the giant crocodile, like the best, it's not a spoiler, it's clearly in the trailer. It's right. the best part of all. Yeah. It's the giant crocodile swimming up from Florida. And all it's I can think of swimming up from Florida to Chicago, because that sounds like the craziest <laughs> trip any crocodile could take. But then all I can think of is being a Chicagoan. The Chicago River is like this murky, gross thing where they dye it green yep. for St. Patrick's Day for decades. So I'm thinking, if that doesn't kill the giant crocodile, nothing is going to kill right. the giant crocodile. If only they'd had this on St. Patrick's Day and it had the crocodile and it had the parade and the Ferris Bueller comes through and the crocodile just goes... 
<laughs> that would have no been more. amazing. Yeah, that, that, that is your fanfic that you want. Okay, so you have a good point, though. It does take place in Chicago. You are from Chicago. Why does Chicago always get destroyed in these giant action movies? And I have not seen Chicago get destroyed so badly in an action movie since, I think, one of the Transformers. Like, they all destroy Chicago. I don't know Transformers. Why. And, and then multiple Dark Knights. Multiple Dark Knights destroy. It's Chicago. So Wacker Drive is always like ground zero for the mayhem. I Why know it's that? almost like if you actually when when it when the zombie apocalypse hits or whatever <laughs> actually happens that turns us, we need to not be in Chicago. Okay. But um, I think it's because the Chicago is a beautiful city and it does have the architecture and there's water that actually runs through it, so you get that and they utilize that in the movie. So there's like a lot of that, and I think you know I think everyone in the world sort of knows Chicago. It's like as iconic as New York. Right. The skyline for sure. Like you, you see those whatever those the roundy parking structures. The corn cob buildings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see yes. those. You see the Johnny Hancock Tower. You know mm -hmm. what city you're in. Um, Immediately. L.A. gets destroyed a lot too, but Chicago. I think maybe part of it too is like it's supposed to be a wholesome Midwestern city, so like let's beat the crap out of it and right. like ruin everyone's notions about what's safe. Right. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> like people it. in Midwest are nice, so if we're killing people in the heartland, right. then. <laughs> it's okay when New York and L.A. get destroyed. Right. When Chicago gets destroyed, like then There's they really mean it. Right. There's a part in the movie where they're, they're going to bomb Chicago, and it's like, oh no, you can't bomb Chicago. But in actuality, it's like, bomb the hell out of Chicago. <laughs> That's the bomb. The mother of all bombs, the, the Moab, the, the comes Moab. through. So everybody in this movie is really overqualified. Beyond Dwayne Johnson, it's a really good cast. Naomi Harris, Malin Ackerman, um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan doing a terrible southern accent, but he's, he's got swagger. You're not a fan? Okay, mm -hmm. why don't you like him? Jeffrey Dean Morgan ruins everything. No. Like, literally, <laughs> that is like, like when he walked onto the set of The Walking Dead. No, when I actually heard that he had been cast on The Walking Dead, that was like, wrap it up, I'm not watching it anymore. And I was a deadhead. Like, I was literally invested. Like, I cried when Glenn almost died. So, like, I was like completely into Every time somebody dies on Walking Dead, I'm like literally destroyed. Like, a meme I did went viral of like Glenn dying because I like clocked in Sally Field, like having her moment at the graveside and still Magnolia's. Like, I was into it. And then they said, Jeffrey Dean Morgan is like, and I was like, I'm out. And the moment he walked on the set, I was like, wow. <laughs> what is your beef? What is your beef with him? He's, He's one of those actors that I think gets so many breaks. You know what I mean? Like, he turns up so many different places. He gets so many breaks. And I don't think he's that good at what he does. I just think he happens to be, like, kind of the kind of hot older white guy. So then he gets breaks because of that. And it's like, no, you're not good. Like, the only time he was ever good was when he was, like, the father the first season on, like, Supernatural. And then they killed him wow. off. And we never had to see him again. Wow. He and then he turned TV. up on Grey's Anatomy. And he was, like, supposed to be in love with Izzy. And that was horrible. I was like... Let him die, Izzy. Like, <laughs> let him die. Wow. You have followed this man's career. <laughs> you are very knowledgeable about Jeffrey Dean Morgan. In I, hate him. I don't think anybody else is. No, I know. There's something else going on there. Okay, Perhaps. so so this was terrible, but what was good about it? Matt and I were squirming and laughing and clapping. It's it's big animals fighting each other. Um, did, did it deliver in that regard? Okay. It did deliver in that regard. Okay. It is like I found myself rooting for the giant gorilla the jacked up crocodile thing. I found myself really rooting for the wolf because the wolf had skills. Like a flying wolf to me just changes the game. And then when he threw the quills, I was like, go wolf. So I was actually like so You're happy. the only one in the audience cheering for the wolf. I was cheering for the wolf. Like, Cause all the people, all the characters in this movie are literally dicks. With yeah. the exception of- Not Naomi Harris. Naomi Harris. But she's a felon. But she is a felon. And I had a problem with the black girl being a felon. But then I was like, okay. No, but no. she's a scientist. She's got a PhD from Stanford. And there was she's actually a, a reason why she was a felon. And that's one of the um, best reasons you could ever be a felon. She's altruistic. She's altruistic. Felon. But you know what? She's really bad in this too. But like, and I wanted her, well, you can't say, okay, this is her from Moonlight. You kind of have to like suspend belief and go, this is her check. She's getting a paycheck for this. We know that the people that did Moonlight did it for pennies on the dollar. So now she's a big star in an Oscar nominated movie. She gets to go out and make these like kind of schlocky blockbusters. Right. And she she worked in her American accent. She did. Yeah. And, and I found fine. her compelling and her weave looked good. Like 
So I was like, get in there, help right. me make that money. Yeah. She got so, away. Speaking of fashion, there's a moment that I heard you laugh out loud at when Malin Ackerman is like walking out to the helicopter. Can we talk about her outfit for a sec? What is she wearing to get on the helicopter to escape the top of okay. the building? The the world is coming to an end. There's a <laughs> crocodile that has crossed the Everglades and somehow made it to Chicago. There is a wolf that flies that is morphing into other things as we go. Yes. It has killed Joe Magnano earlier in the movie, <laughs> the hottest guy in the movie. Like literally, Malin does a complete outfit change into like a siren red dress with the coat over her shoulders. She doesn't put her coat on, she throws it over her shoulders. And she does a makeup refresh and a hair refresh. Malin is dressing right. to be the villain. Like she's like, play, it's like almost like she was doing Cruella DeVille and yes. I absolutely loved it. Cause every time she came out, I was like, yes girl. <laughs> that dress is on point. Now I will add editorial note. Yes. There is a woman in a red dress that gets eaten by one of the monsters in the video game. Okay, so Matt tells us there's a video game of this movie. Which we did not know. We did not know. Yeah. I was not shows aware up of that. in the movie. You but see I... the console behind Jake Lacey. But I didn't realize that was in a real one of the thing. Shots. I didn't notice yep. the video game. But so is, is this possibly the best movie ever based on a video game? This might be. This We, we might reach a new standard here, right? Better than the Lara Croft movies. Look, better, anything's better, better than, than Alone Lara in the Croft. Dark. Wait, is Pacific Rim, uh, is Pacific no. Rim, are no, those? No. no, those are just big, dumb kaiju movies. Oh, wow. But okay. most video game movies are terrible. Then this I will say, this is the best video game movie <laughs> that I have seen. There you go. There's a ringing endorsement. Okay. How many have you seen? I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of them. They sneak up on you. Okay. They so, do. So we have a little wine glass rating system here on Wine the Flick. How many glasses of wine or drinks or whatever do you need before this? to make it tolerable, or do you need any? I was totally sober going into this, as were you. I was. Um, Would it have been more fun if we had a glass of wine before? This is very true. <laughs> The question is how many? I think you need four glasses to think that this movie is amazing. I think you need like two to like really let loose and enjoy the movie for what it is. Okay, so two. I think two is fair. I think we're really like, like a, a movie pour, a big movie pour going into it, and maybe one afterward to have right. a conversation about how stupid right. it is after. Right. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Will you come back again? I will bring you to a good one next time, I promise. I will come back again. <laughs> How much worse can it get? Bye. Thanks. Where can people find? Oh, yeah, Marcellus. Oh, yeah. Where can we find you? We um, have, we have on I Twitter. I am Marky Mark, but it's like Marky, like name and lights. M A R Q U E E M A R C on Instagram and on Twitter. He's very photogenic. And watch for the book. Normally. The book is coming out. He's, oh, and his the book. book. The name um, of the book? Supreme, book. Black Supermodels. It comes out fall of 2019. And it's a beautiful art table book. And it's not going to be one of those crazy Tashin books that's $250. It's going to be like in the $49 to $59 range. So everybody can buy it. And please buy it because it's amazing. Thank you, Marcellus. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. <laughs>